Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. One day I'm going to run, pop all those back seats <laughs> and bring a radiator down here. Actually, that's probably I won't wait for. I'll just put a radiator down in front of you. Welcome. It's good to come together to worship God, to begin to just seek His face as we move from Christmas, because Christmas ended sort of last week. In case you didn't realise that Candlemas is the official end of Christmas in the church this year. And now we're just beginning to think about Lent, which is just three weeks away. It's scary, isn't it? <laughs> Time seems to go so fast. So it's good to come together and just to let God speak to us and refresh us. And on a nice Sunday like this, it's good to meet together. So let's begin by singing our first hymn, number 467. Tell out my soul, the greatest of all, number 467. <coughs> Turn to our red books and to page one. We meet together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Over the page, we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let me all our cities we continue in prayer. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. 
And the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There's no other commandment greater than these. Of these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord. Amen. A few moments of silence as we examine our hearts. And we remember that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. We use the prayer at the top of page three. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our name, in thought and word and deed, in the negligence, the weakness, for our own deliverance. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, and forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may save you. For the glory of your name. So we let God speak to our hearts, our minds, our spirits, the reality and truth of his grace and mercy. Almighty God forgives all who truly repent. We have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Those who are forgiven and restored and renewed, we can stand and praise God together as we say the glory. Glory to God in the highest. And peace in his people. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, forgive us, we praise you for your Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Lord God, Lamb of God, we take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. We are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. As we stand, let us pray. We call it for the third Sunday before that. Eternal God, whose Son Jesus went amongst the crowds, and brought healing with his touch. Help us to show his love in your church as we gather together, and by our lives as they are transformed into the image of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Be seated for our New Testament lesson. The first reading is taken from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 2, verses 1 to 16. When I came to you, brothers, I did not come with eloquence or superior wisdom, as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you, except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear, and with much trembling, my message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. No, we speak of God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, as it is written, no eye has seen, nor ear has heard, 
no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed it to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, <coughs> even the deep things of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. We have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the spirit, expressing spiritual truths in spiritual words. The man without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them, but they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual man makes judgments about all things, but he himself is not subject to any man's judgment. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Our next hymn is number 180. God's Spirit is in my heart, He has called me and set me apart. And this is an old new one or a new old one. I'm not sure which way around we want to describe it, but um, I'm not sure. Do people know it? It's fairly easy, so we'll, we'll, the choir will have practices, so they'll be good with it. Shall we stand? Just. Thank you. 
We remain standing for the gospel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew, chapter 5. Oh, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. The city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Help us, Father, to hear your voice, that your spirit may speak to us that which we need to hear in Jesus' name. Please be seated. <coughs> I had a horrible thought um, last night, well, early this morning. It occurred to me that I've been involved in full-time Christian ministry for 40 years. Well, where's all the time gone? I don't know. But one of the things in those 40 years I've, I've come to realise is that there is one word you should never use in polite Christian company. Let you ponder on what that might be for a moment. Um, I spent the five years before I moved here working for the Diocese of Lincoln, and part of my job was to go out to churches around the county and around the diocese, helping them to explore who they were and what God was calling them to do and to be in their local community. And that usually went really well until I mentioned the one word which you shouldn't use in polite Christian circles evangelism because as soon as you use that word we all sort of go oh no, no i don't know what picture comes to your mind when we talk about evangelism there's usually two common ones there's the picture of um, the man and that usually is a man sadly um, um, standing on the street corner somewhere with the bible in the hand shouting at people telling them to repent for the kingdom of god is at hand and somehow making everybody sort of slightly embarrassed and cringing and, and sort of scuttling past because they don't want to do that. The other picture of evangelism is the one which unfortunately I was involved in, I say unfortunately because, not because it wasn't good, but because the impression that it gives, and that is the, the large crusade. So I worked quite a lot on Mission to London and Mission to Mission England. So I was involved in, especially the Aston Villa, the Villa Park one with Billy Graham. And, the picture of evangelism that that presents is that you've got this 
really gifted person at the front who preaches for 40 minutes or so, and then invites you to get up out of your seats and come to the front. And as you do that, you can become a Christian. And there's that sort of picture of evangelism where it needs a special man, a special gifted woman who could do that. And that's not evangelism. The word evangelism simply means it's to help people discover the good news. And evangelism is not usually an event. It's usually a process. And most people, we're told through research, take about five years from when they first hear something about the love and grace of God to when they respond in some way by saying, I want to, to move forward in this love and grace in a new way. And then what happens after that is they keep on having to say yes again and again and again. A new, fresh commitment. It's Valentine's Day coming up soon. Men, don't forget. But in our household, we've banned flowers and cards for Valentine's Day. Not because I always forget, but just simply because we think that actually the important thing is not that we do it just on one day, but that every day we remind each other that we love each other. By telling them, I love you. And that helps to keep our commitment to each other growing and developing. And one of the great griefs of those who lost partners is that you can't tell them they're fresh in the same way that you used to that you love them, because you still love them, but they're, they're not there anymore. And that causes the pain that very often comes in grief. At the heart of the Christian faith is not an event, but an invitation to a journey, to be a follower of Jesus, that we might learn to love him and learn to let him love us, so that then his spirit might work within us, that we might then be salt and light in the world, so that people might see something of the love of God in us. And as they see something of the love of God in us, that they are provoked to ask the question, well, what's going on in that person's life? And sometimes even to ask us. And one of the thin bits of research which they did after the Billy Graham Mission to in Mission England um, event was they did some research and they discovered that 98.6% of the people who responded to the Billy Graham invitation to come forward had started their journey with the invitation of a friend. That it was the life and the influence of friends which made a difference for them. And all that Billy Graham did was, was moving that next little step along their journey to say, yes, I want to do more about following Jesus. And that was all the feeling. And then for most people, that was a long journey, not a, not a short journey. So when we think about the word evangelism, we need to sort of ditch our memories and our, and our experiences and say, what does it look like to be an evangelist? Well, I want to suggest that it's something within those words from Corinthians 2. I did not come to you, Paul says, proclaiming the mystery of God in, loft, God in lofty wisdom or words, but instead I knew nothing amongst you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And this is a bit ironic. I came in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. I find that incredibly reassuring because whenever it comes to the situation where I have to talk to someone a bit more about the love of God, especially on a one-to-one -one basis who's not part of the church, my initial response is fear and trembling, and oh, I don't know what to say. I don't know whether I'm odd like that, but I think most of us, that's our experience. We would like to help people to see it before, but we don't know what to say. And Paul says that his speech and proclamation may then depend not upon his wisdom, but on the demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that people's faith will not rest upon human wisdom, but on the power of God. You see, the temptation is that it's our responsibility. We've got to somehow convince people with the strength of our argument that God's love is for them, and that if they just listen to our words, our wise words, our powerful words, they will change around and start saying, yes, I want to become a follower of Jesus. I've never seen it happen like that. But simply by letting the Spirit speak to people. Not with wise words, but speak to the heart. And sometimes he uses us to do that. 
but that it's more just simply showing by the way we love and the deeds that we do and simply when necessary giving brief explanation and helping people to know that they need to respond that people move on in faith it's not because we're clever and i find that liberating because it's not dependent upon me i don't have to do anything i have to be available to let god do something And if someone doesn't listen to what I'm saying, if someone's not responding, it's not my fault either. Because I think sometimes the fear is that, well, if I get it, what if I get it wrong? What if I blow it? What if I say the wrong thing? Well, that's not our responsibility either. God says I would be responsible for this. So you can relax. And if it doesn't come, they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting me. So we speak not as in our own words, but we speak words of the spirit. So that they, people might see something of the love of God. And that's the invitation that we have, is to help people to see the love of God. And that invitation which we bring as God's people is not dependent upon us being good. It says it's the righteousness of God in those words from Matthew that helps us. It's not that we should, not that we should be like the scribes and the Pharisees, but that God's righteousness which exceeds them is at work within us. And that word righteousness there has literally means is that we are right with God. We tend to think of righteousness as being a standard of holiness. And in one sense, it is a standard of holiness. But it's God's holiness at work within us. That we are right with God. And God sees us as right with him because we are in Christ Jesus. And so it's God's righteousness, not our goodness, that is at work. Which is just as well, because if it was my goodness, then I'd be in real trouble. But it's God's righteousness at work within us, which equips us to be followers of Jesus. So that then we might be salt and light. So that the things we do and the things that we say show forth the love of God, his kingdom at work in us and around us. So that the light might shine in darkness. And so really our prayer is simply, God, help my light to shine better. Help me to know where to spread my salt. I drove home last night from Appleton Whisk um, and the gritter was out and um, it was sort of hanging back a bit. But I think that's, that's good to have the gritter out. It's very useful to make sure the road doesn't get slippery. But then I thought as I got out of my car this morning, oh dear, all that salt on the road has made my car really dirty. And salt has those two effects sometimes. It's, it's good, but also it leaves behind it a mess. And then depends what you do with that. And that's what we're called to be, people who are salt. People who are right. And as we do that, that when the time comes, is to ask God to give us a, a courage to simply answer and speak as God wants us to. And most of the time, um, there was a, a, a research done a few years ago which asked people, were they interested in Christian faith? And the answer was that 85% of them said they were not interested in church. 82% of them were interested in Jesus. And so often we think that what we're doing is talking about church. And, and I've been to church, and it's not always the best place in the world, is it? It's good, but, but church in, in this sense, there are good days and bad days, there are good things. And, but people are interested in Jesus. And it's our encounters and stories of Jesus which help people. As we discover and show something of the love of God, then they too can discover something of the love of God in Jesus also. And so if we talk about Jesus, spirituality, not religion, if you like, that becomes attractive. That we are salt and light. Help our light to shine. Help our salt to be spread. So that people might be interested in Jesus and in discovering him come to eternal life. And for that to happen, we need God's spirit. That's what the verses in Corinthians. It's God's spirit at work in us and through us. God's spirit at work and in the people we meet. God's spirit at work in his creation that leads us to the of the life of God. And so my prayer is that we might know more of God's spirit. And when the time comes, he'll give us the right words. Because that's his promise. Let's be still for a moment. And ask God perhaps to fill us afresh 
with history. Touch our hearts and minds with the knowledge that we are righteous in this sight because of Jesus. We've been made right. Perhaps we'll ask him to make our, our life a bit brighter. A bit more how, where to scatter our soul. Perhaps to pray for those whom we long to know something, discover something of the love of God for themselves, that God would pour his spirit out upon them also, that they might see they too are invited to his kingdom. So fill us anew with your spirit, we ask you. Strengthen us with your grace and your mercy. And we ask it in Jesus' name. So we turn to page seven and we stand and affirm our faith again in the words of the We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, God from God, 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 true God from true God, begotten of our name, of one being with the Father, to the end of all things for me. For us and for our salvation, they came down to was his covenant from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified with the conscious man. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with his scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living that day, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped. We have spoken through Christ. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. It's near or sick and dies in a leader's skin on it. Let us pray for the church and the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. Mighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Strengthen Archbishops Justin and Stephen, Bishop Nick and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. We pray for David, our vicar, and for Simon, and okay. all who contribute to our life as a church family, here in Danby Whisk and across our benefits. We ask your blessing on the Deanery Synod Zoom meeting tomorrow evening and also on the meeting of our PCC on Wednesday evening. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Bless and guide Charles, our King, and all members of the royal family. Give wisdom to all in authority and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. Especially pray for peace throughout our world, continuing to pray for an end to the war in Ukraine, and for a peaceful solution to the recent troubles in the Holy Land and other troubled areas of our world. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. us. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, 
that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Fill each one of us with your flavor and flavorsome saltiness and help us to shine as lights in your kingdom, especially in our homes and close relationships. And also be thankful for those we love and those who love us, looking out for one another particularly and you are affected by the rising cost of living and heating their homes. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Comfort and heal all who suffer in body, mind or spirit, whether at home, in hospital or in care. Remembering now in a moment or two of silence, any we know personally, Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We remember too all NHS workers, especially those in our hospitals, clinics and GP surgeries and the ambulance service and all who work in the healing professions. And pray for solutions to be sought which will bring the current strikes and service uncertainties and disruptions to an end. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Hear us to remember those who have died in the faith of Christ, whether recently or some time ago, or whose anniversaries occur at this time. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom and comfort and bless all who mourn. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Finally, we pray for the continuing search for Nicola Bully, remembering her partner, children, her parents and sister, and close relatives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We say together, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand? Jesus is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. And we meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And we will also be with you. And share with one another the sign of peace. Our next hymn is number three hundred and fifty six. So, breath of life can read to us, number three hundred and fifty six.
Heavenly Father, we bring before you these fruits of your creation, the offering of our lives, and the fruits of our labors, given in so many different ways. For all things come from you, O Lord, and of your own, and your doing. We're going to use Prayer B on page 22. Prayer B on page 22. The Lord is here. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. <laughs> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise for your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Savior. By the power of the Holy Spirit, as your sole son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms to us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and one for you, O Holy King. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name. We ever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of our hearts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the hearts. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the hearts. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness, granted by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will. These gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. During the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave it thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of new covenant, shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has died. Christ will die. So, Father, according to mine, Jesus' death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world. Rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming glory. We love you. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice. Of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Then the Holy Spirit of your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and with you. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Going back to page 12, Jesus himself has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Continuing to share bread and wine, simply by inviting you to come forward to the front one at a time or two at a time, and, and I'll dip the wafer into the wine, and we'll receive both kinds at the same time. So now let's warn here with faith, receiving the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave us, and his blood, which he shed for us. Let us eat and drink in remembrance that he died for us. Feed on him in our hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Take the prayer at the top of page 50. We do not presume to come to this sort of thing, merciful Lord, trusting in our own minds, but in your manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much to gather on the front of our new Lord's name. You are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so that we the flesh of your dear Son. And the great gifts of that our sinful body is weak by its time, and our soul is washed in his most precious life, and that we never more dwell in him. Once the choir of receiving communion, they're going to be in number 53. Be still from the presence of the Lord. You're welcome to join in if you'd like to, and just sit quietly and listen as they sing. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Merciful Father, who gave Jesus your Son to be for us the bread of life, that those who come to him shall never hunger, draw us to the Lord in faith and love, that as we eat and drink with him, we may one day be with him at his table in the kingdom. May he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. We join together in prayer at the bottom of page 16. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and for us. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gates of glory. May we who share Christ live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to us. We who live his life to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so that we and all your children shall be free. And the whole earth live to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In number 226, I cannot tell the human angels worship number 226.
We ask God to bless us and to make us a blessing in the world where we live. But now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, fill our hearts and our minds with the knowledge and the love of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you both now and forevermore. Amen. Finish our service by singing one last song. You mm -hmm. shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. Number 571. The choir might like to possess one of these something for the first time so that we can sing for the middle of the congregation and they can enjoy hearing you a bit louder as well. So let's sing You Shall Go Out with Joy, number 571. Mm -hmm. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday.